Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. Back with the man, myth, the legend, somebody who's helping him be a better trader and investor, Mr. Dan Bird. How are you doing, sir? Good morning. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing well. So I want to talk about uh, CPI. We obviously have a reading coming out here on Wednesday, the 13th, I believe. And I want to just go back and remind people what happened on June 10th. There was an expectation. These are my words, not yours. I believe Wall Street going into the 10th believed in peak inflation. I believe that they thought they'd seen the highest reading and that good times were to be had. I obviously did not. I called CPI to be higher, and I almost called the number exactly. Heading into this week, I think Wall Street once again believes that peak inflation is coming. Uh, it is here. They're actually keeping it flat, 8.6 eight, six to 8.6. Eight, six. I, again, think it's going higher. I think it's going to go to at least 8.8. Eight. So we have not seen peak inflation as of yet. So I want to remember what happened on June 10th, or actually June 9th, 10th, and 11th to the stock market when they were caught surprised. Does any of that make sense? Sure. It's a very important week this week. Yeah. It could change everything. We are on the cusp. We're right on the cusp. And I'll show you what I mean. But that inflation report on Wednesday will change everything. It might. I don't think it's going to change things, the, the outcome for the whole year, but it may change the trajectory of the outcome. So let's do the audience a favor. For those who didn't watch our videos uh, after the last report, can you can you bring up a chart and, and show what happened last time when CPI came in hot and Wall Street was on the wrong side? Yeah, let's see. Let's see, what's a good one? Yeah, this is a really good one. All right, I'm gonna share and show you a chart of, make this a little bigger. Hmm. Can you see that? I can, thank you. There you go. Okay, so this is, uh, chart that I've shown before, this is my head and shoulders chart that shows the whole market starting back here in November last of actually 2020 mm -hmm. with a big bull, bull run till we got to the end of the year and then things started crashing and where we're at right now, right over here. Okay. So this big red one right here was the day before the CPI number. Yep. So- And most of that was the afternoon, as I recall, it was the last couple of hours. Yeah, you can see that be before that, leading up to it, the market had had a really nice advance. And then the week before, it's sort of like just leveled off and went sideways, <clears throat> hoping for peak inflation. And if it had, it would have taken off. Correct. But the day before, for some reason, the market, either somebody, either a lot of big traders knew what the number was going to be, or they were just being safe and closing all the positions where they made money during this big run up. Yeah, they were going flat, if you will. Going flat, yeah. But anyway, it sold off. Mm -hmm. Ended at the low. Number came out the next morning. The market gap lower. Sold off all day. The next day, gap lower, which was Friday. Sold off all day. Mm -hmm. And over the next week, it made a new low. Right. Which Tom Bowley called the bottom. Yep. And we talked about that on the playlist. You can look it up. We'll see if that holds. That's why I put it there. I'm just, you know, just curious to watch it and see if it actually holds. I think that's a genius idea. That's a good idea. Right. So that's what things, that's where things look like right now. Okay. Um, this is the downtrend line. The market is almost right back to that downtrend line. Mm -hmm. uh, for a lot of reasons, we could, if, the CPI number does show peak inflation, we could get an explosive rally. Oh, I, th I think it's the exact same setup. I think Wall Street is leaning yeah. one direction. They want it to go higher. I think Wall Street naturally wants the market to go higher. It's just a natural bias. And I think they're, I think they're looking for CPI. And like if CPI <laughs> comes in, for example, at 8.5 or 8.4, and it leads to quote unquote peak inflation talk, I think you're right. I think it explodes higher. I actually think it needs to be 
at least the lowest number that it's been so far, which is a three or below. Okay. So you want a big gap. Okay. Yeah. I think it needs to actually show a lower number. I don't see how that happens in this report. Okay. Well, we're, we're going to find out. Yeah. Um, this is, this shows you some of the reasons why I think we're right on the cusp. Mm -hmm. This is a really critical week that that report, and we could get a nice rally on Monday and Tuesday. Maybe. Yeah. Into it, or at least Monday and then start selling off on Tuesday, just like the last time. Yeah. People going flat again. Yeah. But this, this is where the resistance is. It's at the 50 day moving average, which is at 39.84. And we closed Friday at just about 3,900. Mm -hmm. And it's this downtrend line right here, which is at 39.50 or so. So somewhere in this range, you know, somewhere below 4,000 is significant resistance. So there's a lot of reasons why the market could sell off if it does not get through that. There's also a lot of reasons why the market could have an explosive rally if it does get through that. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is, this is why I say it's a really critical week. We are so close to this position that could change everything. Okay. So that CPI report is really, really important. Yeah. There, there's obviously something else, as you know, that happens next week. I think it starts Tuesday with Pepsi or PepsiCo, and then goes into the big banks. We we start having earnings, which for me, I don't give a rat's ass about Q2 earnings. I care about people's uh, talk about the second half and whether or not they're cutting their earnings expectations. Because we've had multiple compression, but not earnings cuts. I don't know if you've seen it. I'm sure you have. That the average Wall Street analyst still thinks that the S&P 500 has 10% earnings growth this year, which yeah. I think is nuts. Well... We'll find out. I don't, think, <laughs> I don't think it's nuts. Okay, awesome. Um, I love disagreement. But we'll see if it comes true or not. Yeah. I, I think, I actually think that the earnings won't be that bad. But again, I, again, I'm not, just be very clear. Projections, I, projections I, I, will be. I think earnings are fine. The rear view mirror is fine. Right. It's projections. And I honestly think, a lot of them, a lot of it, because again, I was an accountant who prepared these reports way back in my career. The CEO and the CFO are right now going, my, my shareholders expect the second half to be weak. I need to take this as an, a, a time to lower my expectations. An opportunity. So I, yeah, it's an opportunity. If I don't take this, I'm an idiot. Right. That's so right. I, I think there are going to be earnings adjustments, cuts, whatever you want to call it. Because the market expects it. If you're a CEO, CFO, you're an idiot not to take it. No, I think that's true. I'm, one of the reasons I think earnings are not going to be as bad as what everyone's thinking, even though the projections might come down, is this chart that I showed before. Yeah. This is the consumer spending. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, yeah, it's coming down, but it's, not, it's nowhere close to the pre-COVID trend. Yeah, the earnings are fine, but as you know. Well above it. Oh yeah, no, I agree. I think earnings will uh, the rear view mirror of earnings will be fine. Right. But I expect CEO after CEO after CEO to say, "Oh, supply chain. Oh, inflation. Oh, currency. Oh, strong dollar. Oh, the consumer. Oh, and they're going to go, I'm going to take my earnings expectation down 5%, 7%. It won't be huge, but when you add those up and you take the S&P 500 earnings from 512 to 437, and you throw on a multiple, that means lower S&P 500. So when that happens, and if it results in those stocks prices going down, mm -hmm. that's what I mean by putting together a watch list. Yes. That's and good, com good companies with real products, good balance sheets. I couldn't good, agree more. Good cash flow. And if they're one of the ones putting out those warnings and their stock drops. I totally agree. That's exactly where I was hoping we would go. For Time me, to... bear markets and floors are at least a two-step function. Multiple compression is always first. We are mainly through that. Earnings cuts is next. And again, they don't have to actually, these, again, I have created these financial reports. These CEOs and CFOs don't actually have to believe that they're going to hurt. They just see an opportunity to lower the bar. And believe me, they are going to take it. Yeah. 
because they want to earnings beat every time, beat in raise, beat in raise. And if you could take it down in a market where everybody else is, and then beat it and then beat it. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I I don't disagree with that. Um, I, I think that for the most part, a lot of that's priced in. We're going to find out. We'll find out. Mm -hmm. Let's revisit my, Oh, I love this one. Rolling inflation chart from last time. Mm -hmm. So I'll update this again, Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So in fact, what I said last time that we looked at this, was remember last time we thought this eight six would be below the eight three. Mm-hmm. It wasn't. It was above the eight three, and it was above the eight five, and it was above the eight five. Right. So we didn't get peak inflation back here. Now we're hoping for it right here. This is what it would look like if we if these estimates come true. And I'm calling eight three. All right. So I'm calling eight eight. Right. Eight eight. If it's eight eight, and I said this last time, if it's eight eight, we can just throw this whole chart away and forget about it. Yeah, because it's illogical. It, it might be that. fun to continue yeah. to watch it, but it's not really going to have any meaning. But if we do come in at eight three or below, okay, it's gonna it's gonna have huge meaning. Okay, cool. So right. while we're on this topic, let me make another bold. I like it. Um, another bold. Uh, Prediction. Wild ass guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so everyone was talking about inflation. Yeah. Inflation, and they're still saying, "Oh, we're at, we're close to peak inflation." Even if we get a, a number higher, they're still going to say, "We're that's that's uh, that's okay. We're still close to peak inflation." Yeah. That was the one. Yeah, I can hear it already. Right. Which which we probably are. Okay. This could be. We could already have peak inflation last time. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, there's, there are some other things in the economy that have gone down. I, I don't know if you've looked at uh, commodities. Oh, yeah. Lumber, coal, I recall. Copper. Yeah, yeah. I've I mean, seen it all. All of that's come down. Yeah. So that, it, could have, that could it, have an effect. It didn't come down in June. Not much. Yeah. July. So we'll see. Yeah. But the, 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 t- the topic is now has turned away from inflation towards recession. Correct. Now everybody's talking about recession. Right. Oh, we're, we could be in a recession. Correct. We are headed for a recession. There's going to be a recession next year. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be next year. It's right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I've been hearing that on CNBC. Everybody, Mm -hmm. I've actually heard some analysts say, everyone's talking about recession next year. I'm saying recessions right now. Yeah, I think there's multiple talking heads saying that, whether it's Bloomberg or CNBC or MSN or CNN, they're all talking out their ass. So that's the latest uh, news feed, recession. Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. I predict that the next one will be towards the end of the year mm-hmm. will be the fear that the, the um, potential for deflation. <laughs> Kathy Wood, deflation. Yes. That's funny. Okay. And all of that, all of that uh, supply chain issues mm-hmm. and uh, incredibly increased demand. Yep. And I just, you just do a, 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 a thought um, game. Mm-hmm. Think about, all the demand that was pent up, nobody was buying anything during COVID. Mm-hmm. And then COVID ended and everybody wanted to buy everything mm-hmm. and travel and get out and do things. Mm-hmm. So demand spiked, mm-hmm. but demand spiked at a time when nobody was ordering more stuff mm-hmm. because you couldn't get people to the factories. I know. Yep. Couldn't be, get people to, to ship them. Right. So yep. it was a combination of everybody suddenly wanted everything mm-hmm. and everyone for six months during COVID had stopped producing. Yeah. Not completely, but no, no, I understand. That's what, that's what caused the supply chain issues. So those are slowly being resolved. Sure. Companies, retail companies in particular are already talking about having too much inventory. Sure. Yeah. Target Walmart. Because that demand is starting to to tail off at the, at the same time that all of those stores realizing they didn't have what they needed, double ordered. Oh yeah, double and triple ordered. Yep, we've talked about yeah, that. On double and triple ordered. Expecting that demand to stay there, but that demand was a spike, just like COVID. If you look at the, the COVID crash mm-hmm. on the chart, it kind of tells the whole story. No, I agree. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, let me, let me actually show you these charts. These are, these, these are interesting. Okay, so here's the COVID 
COVID crash. If that's think, a crash, yes. <laughs> that's the crash right there. This is the yep. stock market. But if you think of this COVID crash and transfer it to everything else. So this is demand crashing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. This is supply crashing mm -hmm. because demand wasn't there. So warehouses had too much stock. They didn't start replenishing anything. The world was ending, mm -hmm. right? Nobody knew what the outcome of this was going to be. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but then look what happened. It spiked. It went straight down, but then it went straight up. Now, this is the stock market, but you can relate this to demand, supply and demand as well. For sure. On the, demand, the demand went up like this too. Mm -hmm. But all of these warehouses, all of the suppliers weren't ready. Oh, I agree. Mm -hmm. So they didn't have the merchandise in order to accommodate the demand. Mm -hmm. So what happens when you have imbalance between supply and demand? Prices go up. Prices go up. So you've got runaway inflation. Mm -hmm. Of course you do. Mm -hmm. That's that's what happens. It's economics 101. Of course. And on top of that, you've got the federal government putting free money out there to try to to try to solve this problem. Yep. They uh, they. Yeah. So they threw gasoline on the fire. Yeah. Yeah. They, right. They th yeah. And continue. They didn't just throw it. They put put a hose on it. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So <clears throat> all of that led to more inflation mm -hmm. from a supply and demand perspective. All of these companies now were behind the eight ball. Mm -hmm. And this is especially apparent, <coughs> sorry. It's okay. In the, um, the oil rig count, I showed that last week in my newsletter. Mm -hmm. The oil rig count dropped when, when all of this demand dried up and nobody was driving, no one was buying gas, mm -hmm. right? So all of the oil companies shut down their oil rigs. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't bring back an oil rig as quickly as you can shut one down. Amen. It takes months to bring back all of your oil rigs. Mm -hmm. They are still not back to their pre-COVID level. Wow. For the, for the oil rigs. So that's the reason that gasoline and oil is spiking mm -hmm. for the same reason. This, this, all of this is related to COVID. This is, this is the whole market, everything. The, not just the stock market. The stock market is a reflection of the economy. Agreed. The economy is trying to get back to the mean, back to the center. I mean, we can, I, I think a, a great chart is this one right here. I'll go back to this again. This is real spending. Mm -hmm. The red line is the trend pre-COVID, the pre-COVID trend line. Everything is trying to get back to that pre-COVID trend line. Mm -hmm. Everything, oil, prices, supply and demand, consumer spending, everything is trying to get back to this pre-COVID trend line. So spending is still high. It's not back there yet. So what that means is that we, you know, we went up right here to the, the beginning of 2022, and now we're, we are trying to get back to the mean, essentially. Well, you probably have this or you probably get it. What would the trend line be if you took S&P 500 like 2016 to 2019 and extrapolated that? Um, I think I have a chart that yeah, sho I'm, I'm shows sure. that actually. I'm sure you do. Um, it was a, this one here. <coughs> this is the trend line from 2009. Okay. I mean, that, that would bring it all the way down to 3000. Yeah. But so you, it's, pro it's probably above that if you really look at it. That's yeah. It's, it's, this is the COVID crash right here. Right. So it's somewhere in that range. But it, I mean, even if you were to raise that trend line, it still says kind of 3,900, 4,000 is maybe the trend in that last thousand. Again, I think the stock market had a thousand points of fakeness. Yeah. Right. Okay. No, I see what you're, I see I what you're saying. Probably more than a thousand. Okay. If you're talking about the S and P, yeah, I was whatever that chart is. Okay. Yeah. So we're we're at, we've, we were already at a thousand. Could could go a little bit more. Could yeah. go down to thirty five hundred. Okay. Um, the but, other thing, the other thing, just so I mean, you've brought this up many times. When markets correct, they generally don't just go to the mean; they overcorrect right. and then work back. Right. Normally. Normally. 
So back to the conversation about. Um, so you think deflation is the hot topic? Call it November. So, so all of that, all of that supply chain issues that occurred over here are going to get reversed. No, I, it's funny. I told my audience back in December to move. I actually advised everybody to move Christmas from uh, December to July because this, this is what I told them was coming. All those people are triple ordering. I know those people. They're going to triple order. It's going to show up in the summer. Everything's going to be on sale. There was somebody that sh- sent me a picture of a coat at like one discounter. Normal, $99 on sale, $9.99. Right. Move Christmas. Do your Christmas shopping right. Folks, if you have kids and you don't shop right now for Christmas, you are missing an opportunity. Yeah. And everything that happened the, as a result of this big dip right here. Yep. High gas prices, high inflation, high CPI numbers. Mm-hmm out of whack supply chains, Mm -hmm. all that will be the reverse by the end of the year. You think it'll reverse by the end of the year. That's a bold call. I think we'll have deflation. So so let's talk about it. Deflation in like, so, uh, so you think CPI goes negative? uh, No, I don't think CPI will go negative. I think the, the cost of goods will go down. The cost of gas will go down. Okay, but let's let's just talk about it because inside CPI, as somebody who looks at it all the time, there are three big facts. We're talking headline, not core. Right. Headline, not core. So gasoline, 30 some odd percent, right? All the all, you know, energy, I guess. So between today and the end of the year, your call is it that goes down just between today, which is July and the end of December, oil is down. I think it's trading at a hundred bucks a barrel. You think it goes down from here? Yeah. Okay. Food. I think Again. food will go down. Wow. That's a bold call. I think, I, everything. I, 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 think, think I think we'll be talking about deflation at the end of the year. So I think some people are talking about it already. Some of that is hope, i.e. Kathy Wood. Um, right. It's funny. I look, at, I look at oil and I could certainly see it. No question. I could see your picture. I also know we have a external... Um, I don't know, dictator or whatever he's called, Putin, who, if he decided to shut off the spigot to Germany, throws all of this out of whack. Looking at what, again, this is from the All In podcast. It's from memory. Essentially, right now, the world has about a million barrels of oil surplus. If Putin shuts off oil to Germany and the rest of Europe, we go into a negative. And they, they said that if that happened, oil could spike to 175 and worst case, uh, 250 or something. But what I'm saying is the market could naturally lead to deflation. Unfortunately, there's the black swan of what does Putin do? Yeah. Okay. But uh, I don't base my investing decisions on black swans. No, no. I'm just, I just, by definition, just, by definition, you can't. Well, I don't know if this, so this, so this is not an out of, this is not an unknown unknowable, right? Where this is actively going on right now. Right. Um, but yeah, it's, it's funny. I don't know. I've thought about oil a lot because it is, especially as we head into winter, right? It is, impacts the East Coast, heating oil and things that I don't have to think about in California. Some of my real estate friends are educating me on. It, it could be a problem. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No question. I mean, the, the oil conversation... It, just take Putin out of it for a second. No, I agreed. Yeah. It could, yeah. it could still be an issue. I yeah. mean, the, we, we have completely destroyed our energy program. Yeah. We went from being energy independent to right. so much. I totally yeah. agree. Totally a mistake. In my opinion. Yeah, A t- complete ridiculous mistake. Yeah. Easily avoided. Yeah. And, un- and fixable, frankly, but whatever. yeah. Well, it's deliberate. So yeah, 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 it is. It was, yeah, it was done on first day of office. It's, yeah. Right. Okay. Deliberate to try to make us all drive uh, electric cars. Among other things. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But, it's going to be, it, it, I don't know. I'm just trying to think right now. Again, I love making bold calls because, you know, part of, part of having fun is putting it out there. Is oil under a hundred bucks December 31st? Folks, let me know what you think below. Leave comments below. I think so. I am. Uh, yeah, I'll go with uh, that. I'll say it's under a hundred. This is um, from my newsletter two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. 
That's the uh, rig count going up. Yeah, rig I, remember, count. I remember I read this article. I read it covered or whatever, top to bottom. This, this comes out every week. It's, so it's a little bit higher. It's, I think it's above 600 now. But you can see how fast they close the rigs down. Yeah, it's easy to shut a rig. It's hard to get them started. And how slowly they're bringing it back. But they are coming back. So mm. you know, everything's, everything is trying to get back to that mean, trying to normalize. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go with that. I'll. I'll. I'll uh, yeah, I'll say oil again. Wild ass guess is under a hundred on December thirty first or December thirtieth or whatever the last trading day of the year is. Right. But food, though, food's an interesting one. I'm not as confident in food because food has multiple components, and I just feel like we've missed a year of planting, and fertilizer costs have caused. Because again, for me, food is it's always delayed. Right. You make decisions, you don't see it for six or nine months. I believe we've already made tactical mistakes that will impact food costs in December. That's just how I see food. Um, yeah, I, you could, you're probably right about that because food is uh, lagging. It's a seasonal, yeah, it's seasonal. <coughs> yeah. So, so I, I don't think food is, I don't think food's better until. It could be a year before you see the effects of what happened. That's what I'm thinking, yeah. This is, by the way, this is the oil chart. This is WTTIC and Brent. It definitely feels yeah. like it's it's put in a top and, and it's heading lower. It's going sideways. So yeah. put it put in the top back here in March. Yeah. And then try to come back to the top again in June. And it's kind of crashed since then. It's actually below the low. It's actually at the lowest low. Yeah, right? a lot of that's China shutting down, fears of a recession, seven dollars. I mean, it took me $133 to fill up my car, not even an SUV. It was my car. It's crazy. Right. I know. Yeah. Well, can we take can we take a peek at Kathy Woods? Because I want to give her some credit. I think Kathy Wood had a good week. Uh, yeah. Before before we do that, this is um, I was just playing around with the same chart, putting on Fibonacci levels. Yeah. And what I like to do sometimes is put on multiple different Fibonacci levels to see where they cross. Mm -hmm. So this blue one here is the whole thing. It's from when we hit the high in June all the way back to the COVID low. Oh, gotcha. OK. So these are the major ones. So you can see the major one here is at 38. 14, which we just went through that. So That's the 50% Fibonacci, right? That's the 62%. 50% oh, okay. is 3,500. That's what everybody's talking about. Uh, got it, got it, got it, got it. And then the 38, which is the next major one, is at 3,200. All right. So that's right. where I get interested. 32. Yeah. So if this, if this does, if the CPI number comes in bad and this, this will probably crash through, it'll probably get to 35. Yeah. If we continue going down and 32 is definitely in the cards. Yeah. So this is again, just one white, one guy's wild ass guess who has zero money in the market. So let's be clear. I got no skin in the game. Uh, CPI is going to come in hot. We are going to see CEOs and CFOs take the opportunity to talk down their quarters. And then my ass is going shopping. Uh, yeah. Because again, you get you get a shopping list ready of great companies with great mo, great earnings, real real earnings, and I could put together a six figure portfolio in a couple of weeks, I think. So I've had some people ask me, you know, is it safe to get back in? You know, or, or, or have we seen the bottom? Is it going back up? Well, you don't really know if it's trending back up until we make a higher high. Right. Right. So these are the higher. This is the lower low came down to here we made a, a high here mm -hmm. we made a lower low yeah the trend we made is a not lower good right high now. we made a lower low and we don't know yet what the next high is going to be we don't know yeah so we've got to be above 4200 mm -hmm. to, to make feel the next good high yeah in order to confirm that the trend is back up again yeah to, to bally's call of the bottom or bally sorry if i mispronounced it, it, it you got to get that higher high yeah mm -hmm. that's right yeah, yeah. Very cool. Well, let's no, I, give, think that's, yeah. I think that's all I got. Well, let's just give Kathy Wood a props. I, I, oh, yeah. I make fun a lot of times. So I think, I think she had a good week. Well, I don't I, think I her could, portfolio was back to even, but. No, no, it's not back to, let's be clear. It's not back to even, but it had a good week. Hey, so only 23% down. Yeah. So she came back quite a bit. Yeah. Could you, therapeutics. could you trend this over the last two months or is that too difficult to do? Um, we didn't set it up, so I'm asking them crazy questions. So, uh, uh, I I'd have to. I think I set it up in a. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I, maybe. Yeah, I'd time. have to go. I'd have to go find it in the in the uh, watch list. No, it's fine. No I think problem. it is in a watch list, and then I could trend it. But okay, next time. In the portfolio, it looks like that. Um, yeah. So she's coming back. Yeah. So good for her. She had a good week. Right. Yep. Well, and Dan, go ahead we want to look at. Uh, I think I have 
ARC versus the Qs. Oh, okay. so this pink line right here is the NASDAQ. Yeah, she was kicking its ass for a long time. And then, yeah, and these are all of Kathy Wood's. And then, not so much. Moments. So, this dark blue one down here is ARC Innovation that most people talk about. Yeah, RK. Yeah. So, one of hers is kind of kept pace with the NASDAQ. Well, it's, it is the ARC Q, it's supposed to. Yeah, that's right. ARC Q. Yeah. 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 So, again, a uh, lot of fun, a lot of stuff. Wednesday is going to be a big day. I think. Again, we'll see, right? My wild ass guess is inflation um, comes in hot and I can just see CFOs and CEOs. I was, a, I was a peon in those rooms and watching them jibber jabber and go, oh, it's time. We got to lower expectations. We got to take it. Take it now. Everybody else is. We are a fool not to. Keep your job. Get your bonus. These CEOs and CFOs, they care about their bonuses, folks. They're going to take this as an opportunity to lower expectations, uh, in my opinion. So... Are you, I can, are you telling me it's manipulated? I am telling you bold. Yeah, absolutely. freaking lootly. I've been in the rooms with these people making these calls. So, yeah. Going to be fun to watch. It's going to be an right, exciting let me, week. Uh, let me put my um, newsletter yes. back up. Yes, the newsletter that you all need. It's all free. Uh, and you, at a minimum, will laugh at the uh, uh, cartoons. And by the way, I, I showed this a long time ago, but <laughs> this is kind of the cycle yeah. of the market. And if you remember that chart I just put up a little bit ago, <laughs> what it actually yeah. looks like, it looks very similar to this. It does. In fact, we haven't even come down as far as this. Yeah, we've not, we've not had capitulation. I don't think we've even had capitulation. We've had some denial. Yeah. We've had a little bit of panic. We, yeah, that, that CPI day, that was a little bit of panic. That was two, panic. Two, we two, get, ga two gaps and, down. And that could happen. We could get capitulation next week. We could. We could. <clears throat> what I like to see for capitulation is, a big sell-off with a big spike in the VIX. Yeah, I want to see VIX at 41. Right. Get the VIX over 40 with a big sell-off. Yeah. And that's the time to start getting Get in. greedy. Yeah. So this is at breakpointtrading at gmail.com. If you want to uh, get this, if you're listening to the podcast, breakpointtrading at gmail.com. Dan, thank you for your time. We will you talk bet. next week. I'm sure it will be exciting. Have a good weekend. You too, buddy. Feel better. Take care.